this is more important than that. Yeah. No, you understand I'm not, what I'm saying? Here. Don't I ask me again. Here. I don't have to tell you and activate yeah. myself. Yes, okay. Yeah. It's I your said job. I'm so Listen sorry. to everyone. I said sorry yeah. that when I asked at, I at the beginning, I said sorry, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So keep arguing. You're not supposed to argue with me. No, no, that's it. That's it. at uh, Park Vancouver Poker Room at Lounge Area, waiting for a 1-3 seat right now. Yeah. For the first interesting hand, I pick up King-3 of spades at the middle position. Under the gun and the low jack limps. Seeing this as dead money, I raise it up to $20 to either take it down or isolate one of the limpers. Only under the gun calls. It's heads up into a flop of a6 jack with one spade. The villain checks. With a flop that is in my range and some back doors, I decide to see bet small to hopefully take it down now or set up for a possible double or triple barrel. I bet $15. The villain calls. The turn is a deuce of spades. The villain checks again. I managed to pick up some extra equity with one of my backdoor draws, so I'm going to continue with my second barrel. Also keeping in mind I still have the range advantage, I size up and bet $40. And that is good enough to take it down. This hand, I pick up pocket kings under the gun plus one. I open to $15. Only the button calls. It's heads up into a flop of jack six eight with two diamonds. Definitely a board to see bet here. I have some options for bet sizing and ultimately decide to go for an over bet to target all draws and a jack. I don't remember the exact stack size the villain had, but I remember it wasn't that much, something like $180 or $200 behind. I bet $40, aiming to get him to commit by the turn. Unfortunately, he folds. This hand, I pick up pocket fours in the middle position. Under the gun plus one limps, and I raise it up to $15. The button, big blind, and under the gun plus one calls. It's four way into a flop of king, king, queen. Everyone checks. The turn is a deuce. The big blind checks and under the gun plus one bets $25. Not much for me to do here. I think my hand is too weak for a multi-way showdown and makes no sense for any kind of bluff. So easy fold for me. This hand, I pick up ace-queen at the cutoff. Only the hijack limps. I pump it up to $15. The small blind and hijack calls. It's three-way into a flop of queen-queen six with two clubs. The small blind leads out for $15. The hijack folds. Amazing flop for me hitting trip queens. At this point, I'm just thinking of the best way to get all the money in. The villain is pretty short, but not quite committed with a $15 bet. Me holding the ace of clubs also decreases the likelihood of him leading out with a flush draw, which I think would be the only hand to get more of his money in on the flop. If he happens to have a queen, then everything is going in anyways. I decide to call and let him keep the betting lead. That way, I still might be able to get some more value from a random six or pocket pair. The turn is a nine of clubs. Not a great card as it will likely slow the action. The villain checks. I just go for a value bet, pretty small at $30. And the villain folds. For the next little while, I'm pretty card dead. Nothing very interesting happens. I fold mostly. There are a few hands that I pick up some blinds and dead money preflop by raising in position. 
Here is one of them where I'm at the cutoff with King 5 suited, targeting a limper and raising the, to take it down. This hand, I pick up Jack 9 of hearts at the hijack position. There is a button straddle of $6, the big blind calls, and the low jack limps. I decide to go for the dead money and raise it to $30. The player directly to my left, at the cutoff, tanks for a little bit. It looks like he is contemplating a 3-bet. And then he just calls. Everyone else folds. It's heads up into a flop of 6-3-3 with no hearts. Board doesn't hit my range, nor my hand. I just check. The villain bets $35. Not going to get too fancy here. The villain is pretty tight and I think showed some signs of strength as well. I fold. This hand, I pick up pocket 10s in the small blind. There's a button straddle of $6, so I'm first to act. Whenever there's a button straddle and I'm in the blinds, it's kind of unfamiliar territory for me. Anyways, I call. I think the plan is just to set mine with 10s. I'm never going to be in position. The straddle already bloats the pot a bit, so I don't think I'd want to be in a spot to play 10s out of position in a 3-bet pot that's already bloated to start. Everyone folds to the hijack who calls. The cutoff raises to $25. The button folds. I flat call here. The hijack folds. It's heads up into a flop of ace deuce deuce. With an ace on the flop, I decide to go for a check call line. I check. The villain also checks. The turn is a jack. At this point, I feel my hand is pretty good most of the time. It's very unlikely the villain would check back on the flop with an ace. I block a good amount of jack-10 combos, so I'm probably ahead of a lot of pocket pairs, but still not a board I can bet to extract value. Check calling is, I think, the way to continue. I check. The villain checks again. The river is a king. Terrible run out in general, but not much to do here but check again and hope to win a showdown. I check. The villain does check back and I table my hand to take this one down. This hand, I pick up 7 native clubs at the hijack position. I should mention that at this point, I have been pretty active, raising preflop quite a bit and taking down small pots in position. Anyways, under the gun plus 1 limps. I raise it up to $15 to isolate. Everyone folds except for the initial limper. It heads up into a flop of ace to 6 with 1 club. The villain checks. There is an ace on board that's in my range, as well as some backdoor possibilities to double or triple barrel. I decide to see bet for $15. The villain calls. The turn is an offsuit jack. The villain checks again. I didn't pick up any extra equity, and I feel that players are starting to look me up more. So I slow down and check back. The river is a 5. The villain now bets a tiny $10. I'm never calling the showdown with 8 high. A raise here just makes no sense the way I played it. What am I going to rep here? 3-4? The villain's bet could just be a blocker bet, but I think it's small enough to possibly be trying to induce a raise. I think sometimes I just gotta wave the white flag, and this is one of those spots. I fold. This hand is not really a hand. It's actually a bit of table drama that I captured. So this is what happens. I'm in the big blind. The guy directly to my left, under the gun, raises to $10 and puts in two $5 chips. There are a few callers, and I also call, closing the action with a decent hand to peel a flop. Anyways, during the preflop action, the dealer was multitasking, communicating with a chip runner about something so she turns back and she wasn't sure if under the gun raised to $10 or straddled for $6. Understandably, she asked the player if he raised or straddled. I think she was being considerate, not wanting the player to miss the option if it was a straddle. But the player, for some reason, was really offended by her asking. He openly criticized the dealer a bit, telling her something along the lines, uh, she's not qualified for the job, etc. The dealer said sorry, but that wasn't quite enough. 
the pit boss was called over. I don't usually get involved in other people's drama, but here, I just felt that the dealer did not deserve to get in trouble for this. So I did end up defending her a little bit when the pit boss came over. Anyways, let's play it out. No, you I'm not. You understand what I'm saying? Don't ask me again. I don't have to tell you and yeah. activate myself. Yes, okay. Yeah. It's your I said job. So Listen sorry. to everyone. I said sorry, right? When I keep saying every day. I keep saying every day. I said sorry, right? Okay. Yeah. Just keep arguing. Okay. Just move unreal. On, move on. Tell her. Tell her. Please. Move on. Defend. What? I asked the Highlands. Yeah. Just. She needs, she needs to clarify, right? Yeah, yeah, so good. She clarified and it's good. Let's go. Yeah. I asked the Just Kyla, she ran, she ran up the cheese. Well, she, she, she missed the action. I'm sorry, I said at the beginning, I said, sorry, he needs you start off the grease turn. I just... She missed the action. It's not a big deal. So she missed what? the action. Yeah. So that's why I think okay. the cheeks, right? Yeah. He's he raised ten. He was, she was just double checking if it was a straddle. Yeah, that's it. Check. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's, all it's, it's all good. It's all good. That's just. I'm not angry. I'm just telling well, it's you. Over what you're doing. It's, it's over now. It's over now. Okay. Okay. Let's finish. We all said our piece. Yeah. yeah. If he was straddling, she didn't want him to miss his option, right? So it's yeah, right. it's all good. She needs to clarify. So it's good. It's good. I have to take care of this. Okay. Okay. Carry on. Later on, the pit boss follows up and asks the table if everything is okay. I assure him that we have no problems and the dealer is doing good. I also talk to the player to my left and explain to him that what the dealer was doing was protecting his interests and he was able to understand it more from that angle. So in the end, everything is good and we continue with the game. This hand, I pick up pocket nines at the middle position. Under the gun plus one opens to $10. I call. Everyone else folds except for the button. It's three way into a flop of jack a 10 with two hearts. Plus one checks, I check. The button bets $15. Plus one folds. With an open ender and pair, I call. The turn is ace of hearts, I check again. The villain bets $20. With another over card that the villain seems to not be scared of, and a possible flush as well, I think an open ender draw is probably not wise to continue, as I could already be drawn dead. If I had a heart in my hand, there's some merit to check raising as a bluff with good blockers here, but that is not what I have, so I lay this one down. This hand, I pick up ace king on the button. There are four limpers, and I raise it to $25. Only the small blind calls. It's heads up into a flop of deuce eight jack with two hearts. The villain checks. The range of this flop is better for the villain, so I check back for pot control. The turn is ace of hearts. The villain checks again. Now, I think the board's range favors me overall, and the delayed C bet is taking it down most of the time. I decide to try and get one street of value by checking back and then going for a value bet on the river, targeting a bluff catching hand like a pocket bear. I check. The river is a deuce, the perfect card. The villain checks. I follow through with my plan and bet $30. Here, I'm hoping for a call from pocket nines, tens, or maybe even a jack X hand that slow played the flop. The villain does tank for quite a while but is able to sniff something out and lays it down. This hand, I pick up 10 jack at the low jack position. I open to $10, only the button calls. It's heads up into a flop of a6-5 with two hearts. With an ace high board in my range and some back doors, I see bet for $10. And that's good enough to take it down. This hand, I pick up pocket queens at under the gun. I open to $10, only the cutoff and button calls. It's three way into a flop of seven eight jack with two hearts. I see bet for $20. The cutoff raises to $60. The button then jams all in for his entire stack at $83. I know the graphics read $73. That's just a mistake I made in putting the info. Anyways, the action is on me, and I think for a bit. Calling to see a turn card and assess is okay, I think. 
The button, who is a short stack, pretty much is committing himself with all kinds of drawing hands like flush draw, parent, straight draw, etc. And any jack x. The cutoff, who raised me, is someone I've seen raised with drawing hands before. He has a bit of loose aggressive playstyle. On this board texture, I think there are a lot of combo draws in his range that would raise here. Of course, there's always a chance I'm already dead here to a set or a straight, but I think I'm likely ahead of the cutoff and a good chance I'm ahead of both. If they happen to both be on the hard draw, which I am block, I'm in pretty good shape here, even against Jack X of Hearts. I decide to go all in. The cutoff then sighs and tanks. Fading the snap call is nice. I think this at least confirms my read on the cutoff. He eventually decides to call, and we go to a run out. The turn is a 9, and the river is a 5 of hearts. The cutoff tables 9 6 of hearts for the straight flush. The button shows ace queen of hearts for the nut flush. What a river card. I say nice hand and muck my queens. The very next hand, I reload and pick up pocket queens again, this time in the big blind. The low jack opens to $10. The cutoff and button calls. The small blind folds. I 3 bet to $65. The low jack, the initial raiser, 4 bets to $165. Everyone folds and the action is back on me. I tank for a bit here. I actually would normally fold here, exploitatively at these stakes. That's what my brain is telling me to do. But after losing that last hand with queens, I am just not in a folding mood. I don't really want to 5-bet jam with queens here though. I decide to call and basically commit the rest of my stack if there's no overcard on the flop. This is all against my better judgment. The flop is Jack-6-9 Rainbow. I check, with the intention of check raising all in. The villain bets $100, and I follow through with my plan and go all in. The villain calls. We go to a run out that doesn't really matter. The villain tables pocket aces, and I muck my queens for the second time in a row. For the next little while, nothing really interesting happens. Another streak of being card dead mostly. There are a few hands with preflop play. I continue to pick up some blinds and dead money by opening in position and 3 betting. Here are a couple of those hands. I have 5-6 of clubs in the small blind. The cutoff opens, button calls, and I 3 bet squeeze to take it down. Here I have ace-3 of diamonds on the button. There's a late position open and I 3 bet again to take it down. This hand, I pick up ace 8 of diamonds in the hijack position. Under the gun opens to $15. Everyone folds to me. This hand can be a 3 bet sometimes, but against the under the gun open, and combined with the fact that I have already been 3 betting a lot relative to the table, I decide to cold call this one and peel a flop in a pretty good position. Only the cutoff calls as well. It's 3 way into a flop of 10 9 queen rainbow. Everyone checks. The turn is a 7, under the gun checks again. This card does improve my equity, giving me an open ender. I think it's pretty much a brick for everyone else as it really only improves 8-6, which I block. Under the gun checking twice is pretty much waving the white flag, and I don't think the cutoff can have anything strong checking back the flop. I decide that it's a pretty good spot to take a jab, as I can still rep a good hand slow playing the flop. I make a pot size bet of $50, and everyone folds. This hand, I pick up queen 9 in the big blind. There are 4 limpers, and the small blind also calls. With all the dead money, I decide to raise it up to $30. My hand is not a great one by any means. This is strictly a preflop play for the dead money. There's only one caller at under the gun plus one. It's heads up into a flop of queen 7-7 seven seven with two diamonds. Very good flop for me hitting top pair. Not too many sevens in his range, limp calling preflop. 
And I also have a diamond blocker, which makes the flush draw possibility less concerning. I think I can probably get two streets of value with this type of board targeting pocket pairs if he is not convinced I have a queen. I decide to start with a check. The villain checks back. The turn is a five. I now bet $30 for value. The villain calls. The river is eight of diamonds. There is a flush possibility now on the board. Not that I'm concerned the villain has one here, but this does mean that my value bet can't be too big if I'm looking to get called because it's another possible holding I might have, especially when I block a diamond. I bet $30. The villain tanks for a bit and calls. I table my hand and he mucks. This hand, I pick up pocket sevens at under the gun plus one. I open to $10. Only the middle position and cutoff calls. It's three way into a flop of ace five six. Everyone checks. The turn is a seven. Great card for me turning a set. I just bet $30 for value, now hoping someone has an ace. The middle position raises to $80 and the cutoff folds. The action is back on me. This is an interesting spot. I don't think the villain would play an ace this way. Value hands that don't include an ace would be sets and straights. There are 6 combos of pocket 5s or 6s, and 16 combos of 8 and 9 that can still be in there. Bluffing is not that likely, but I guess he could be one of those players that just doesn't believe I have an ace and randomly raises as a bluff. Anyhow, I think just calling here is best. I'm either way ahead or way behind his value hands and want to keep in his bluffs. I call. The river is a six, pairing the board and giving me the full house. Now I'm just putting him on a smaller full house, straight or random bluff. All of which I think check raising is the best way to get the most money in the pot. Surely he wouldn't check back a full house or straight. And if he wants to bluff, I need to give him that opportunity. I check. The villain actually goes in the tank. At this point, I'm just thinking, please put in a bet. Somehow he finds a check and I just table my hand disappointedly. The villain shows 8-9 suited for the turn straight. What a check. I have no idea how he was able to check back there. That's a lot of misvalue and well played by the villain. This hand, I pick up pocket jacks on the button. There are four limpers and I raise it to $30. Only the small blind calls. It's heads up into a flop of ace, ace, eight. The villain leads out for $30. Kind of odd to lead out here. Slightly concerning since I block flush draws, which is the only draw and most logical hand to lead out that is not an ace. But my hand is too strong to let go at this point. I call. The turn is another ace. Actually a very good card for me, making it less likely the villain has an ace, and also meaning I could potentially be getting value from an 8. The villain continues to bet, this time for $55. With this run out, I'm still not going anywhere quite yet. I think we'll find out if he really has a fourth ace by his action on the river. I call. The river is a 9. The villain now checks. Good sign that I was always in the lead. I think the villain most likely has an 8 or a weaker pocket pair. I decide to go for a value bet targeting that range. He's looking for a cheap showdown and I'll give him one. I bet $50. The villain tanks for quite a while, but finally does find a fold. He tells me that he doesn't think his pocket pair is high enough. I just tell him good fold. And this is the last interesting hand of this session. So um, that wraps up my session at Park. Um, 
yeah, here are the results. I'm gonna have my session results on one side and also uh, Banco update on the other side. Yeah, um, I think today's session was a loss of 500 something dollars and I definitely played pretty horribly. Uh, yeah, um, there's one hand I definitely missed a value bet uh, with, uh, with Full House of the River. Um, there's another hand uh, I had an over pair where I just overplayed it and I'll blame that one on a little bit of tilt. And there's another big hand where I was um, involved in a three-way all-in. It turns out I was actually um, way ahead, but then it didn't hold, so yeah, uh, resulted in a loss. And it doesn't help that I played horribly, but there you guys have it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and um, hope you guys look forward to the next.